There were a lot of rumours about the Galaxy Alpha before it launched, but when it arrived there was a ripple of general shock. For one thing, Samsung had not thrown all of the highest specs at this device, instead opting to keep a sensible screen resolution and a more modest 4G than the other phones on the market. But look at it, it's got something to offer that most Samsung handsets don't. It's made of metal, or at least the main frame is, and we have to say, it's really nicely done. To look at, it keeps the aesthetic of Samsung's other phones like the S5 and the Note 4, but to hold, it's a really lovely little device, and it does leave a lasting impression on you. In terms of the screen, Samsung has gone for a 720x1280 panel on this phone. That's unusual, as most of Samsung's premium phones are 1920x1080 or even higher. But here it doesn't matter, the Alpha is aimed more at people who want a device that offers the build quality and materials of an iPhone. It's a stylish handset for people who are tired of plastic phones. It's stocked with Samsung's own Exynos processor too, rather than one from Qualcomm, and we dare say there's a cost advantage to doing that too, which helps offset the increased price of the metal construction. Even so, the phone is actually more expensive than the Samsung Galaxy S5, so you're going to have to really want that metal cover in order to justify the purchase. Although you get 32GB of included storage, there is a sting in the tail that unlike most of Samsung's phones, you can't add any more via microSD, and that's a shame. That means that you'll have to be more careful about the content that you load onto the device. Also lost on this phone is the waterproofing of the S5, and while that's not the end of the world, we do feel like it's somewhat of a missed opportunity. Samsung's customization of its user interface are also getting better. The visually, the new look is flatter than before and it looks very smart. Samsung is also improving Android's menu system. For example, you can search the settings to find hard to track down options. Also worth noting is the S Health app, which is really great. The visual style is well thought out and although the Alpha doesn't have the UV or O2 saturation measurements of the Galaxy Note 4, having the pedometer and heart rate monitor is really handy and somewhat takes away from the need to have a separate wearable device. Samsung also has its magazine interface, which presents you with relevant stories of interest from around the web. It's actually very cool and gives you a really nice way to discover new information when you're bored and playing with your phone on a train. Battery life is reasonable too. The lower resolution screen helps with this to some extent as higher resolutions and larger screens are a surefire way to suck the life out of your power pack. We think you should get two days of moderate use and one of heavy use. Really, what Samsung has done with the Alpha is create a phone that offers a size that suits people who have really lived with the iPhone and its universe for a while. The size and amazing build quality make for a premium experience, and although the specs are a little bit lacking in places, the phone is well balanced in general and never feels too slow or laggy. Thank <laughs> you.